beautiful church. It reminds me of the church I, I pastored in South Texas, except this one's bigger. It's much bigger than, <laughs> than that church. Now, I'm also very happy to see so many young people. Um, I've processed uh, thousands of young people. Um, in the last seven years, I'm sure that we have sent out thousands of young uh, missionaries into the field. Actually, um, about a week ago, a uh, typhoon hit one of our islands, the island of Palau. And we have about 20 missionaries there. And 14 of them are young people, very young people, men and women. And um, so we were very, very alarmed for them. And I did not sleep very much for two days uh, next to the phone, helping to coordinate with our leadership um, to decide whether we were going to evacuate them or not. And some of these young people actually had the the um, ability to leave the island. They actually had had their plane tickets reserved and they could have left. This is a very, this was a very dangerous hurricane, category four, and it was heading straight to this little island. And they decided to stay. They decided to stay, these young men and women. And they are my heroes. <laughs> I, I'm always telling them that for all the, the young people that we process, every, when I meet them, I tell them, you are my heroes. You are out there doing the Lord's work. So when I see young people here, I'm thinking, my goodness, the potential that this church has is amazing. It is, it is just unbelievable. And I'm glad that they sang that song, All Things Are Possible, because all things are possible to them that believe. How many of you like baseball? Not the, you know, not the most favorite sport now. It's football. Uh, my wife loves baseball. For her, you know, any, any opportunity she gets, she wants to play baseball. I played baseball. Last time I played baseball was like five years ago. And I went home, and I was aching for the next few days <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not as young as I used to be. And, um, you know, I... But there was a time... When I used to play football, there was a time when I used to play basketball. There was a time when I was a little boy back in the early, back in the 1960s, when I used to pick cotton. And uh, I come from a town where cotton was king. I mean, everyone went out to pick cotton. The cotton pickers, that's, that was the name of our football team, the Robstown Cotton Pickers. Robstown, Texas. And um, the town had about 18,000 people back in the 50s into the early 60s. And uh, if you can imagine an entire city, an entire town, everyone, entire families going out to pick cotton. And my mom, she made me, uh, because I, they couldn't afford a, a big, one of those sacks that, that you buy to, to put cotton in. So she got this 50 pound sack of potatoes and she made a, she put a handle on it, and I, I would pick cotton. I, I would make like 50 cents a week. And then, uh, you know, buy myself some, some stuff at the end of the week. But something happened to this little town. And that's my message here about believing God. And especially, this message is for our young people. Something happened in the 60s as violence began to come to this town. Violence. Poverty, drugs, uh, the town suddenly changed. It changed so dramatically that many people began to leave the, the city. You see, the, the, the profession of the cotton picker went out of business when they invented the combines. You know, those things that, that have those blades, those things pick cotton, those machines. And um, the, prof the, the job of the cotton picker was no longer necessary. And that probably had something to do with it. But there were a lot of things that happened in this town that I can't even, I can't go into. But this town began to suffer a lot of violence, a lot of poverty. It was about over 90% Hispanic. And um, 
I remember growing up as a football player, you know, going to playing football in the in the late, well, early, early 70s, playing football, and we just couldn't win a game. And we, you know, we just were, we were, lo we were losing all of our games, football, basketball, baseball, didn't matter what sport it was. We just, we were having a hard time winning games. In the meantime, violence and poverty kept increasing in this town. And it, it got, it developed a reputation. I mean, if you were to go to, from, because this little town of Robstown is in South Texas, if you, if you were to go up north, to Dallas or Austin or, or Fort Worth, they would talk about Robstown. They say, nobody wants to go live there. That town is a dangerous town to go to. Those people are crazy, and they're losers. You know, they, can't, they can't win a game. They can't, they can't do anything right. I remember having played a football game, and we lost, and we got on the bus. And the coach told us, keep your helmet on until we leave the city because they might throw rocks at us or worse. They hated us. They hated Robstown. And as I grew up, I began to believe what people would say about us. They would say that we were not, that we couldn't win, that we were losers, that we were this, that we were criminals. And, you know, growing up as a little boy here, as a young, as a young teenager, hearing these things, was not good for me. And at some point, I began to think, I just want to graduate from high school and leave this town, never come back. I never want to come back to this town. And my friends and I would get together, and we'd say the same thing, and we would talk about what we would do. As soon as we graduate, I'm going to leave this place. I'm never going to come back because I don't want to be called a loser. Well, something happened, and that's where I come to my message. You have a father in this story whose son has been suffering. He is demon-possessed. And who knows how long this has been going on, that the father has reached a point that he's tired He's tired. There's no more hope. And he's even talked to the disciples of Jesus. He's heard about them. He's heard about what, what Jesus does. So he probably thinks these guys can do the same thing. Right? When people read about Jesus, when they hear about Jesus, they probably they look at us and they say, well, they must be able to do the same thing Jesus did because they're followers of Jesus. But then the disciples come, and they can't seem to help this man. They can't seem to help him. Have you ever felt powerless? Have you ever felt when people come to you for help, and you just can't seem to help them? And you're wondering, and you're saying, Jesus, help me. Jesus, give me the strength. Jesus, give me the words. Jesus, help me to be able to help other people. These disciples couldn't cast out this demon. And Jesus comes along. I love the way Jesus thinks. The way Jesus confronts people. The way he challenges us. When they were in a storm and, and Peter says, Master, can I go out there and walk on the water with you? And Jesus just says, come. And so many other stories where we see Jesus just like, what's wrong with you people? What's wrong with you guys? Can't you believe? Because if you believe, all things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible. And we hear those words, and my wife and I, we love, we love that phrase. It's become so much a part of our lives because she and I, we've also gone through our challenges in life. And we are always, almost, almost frustrated sometimes. I think she gets more frustrated than I do. She said, but Jesus said this. Jesus, and, and people tell us, no, 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 you stop thinking that way or stop saying that or stop believing that way. She says, no, no, Jesus said it. So why aren't we living it? Why aren't we living the life that God has called us to live? Why aren't we doing the things that the apostles did? 
Why aren't we accomplishing things, great things for the Lord? Because he has called us to great things. If you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. And the response of this gentleman, this man whose son is demon-possessed, all he can say is, Lord, I believe. Help me. Help me in my unbelief. I need help. Throughout history, men and women have accomplished great things because they believed. I still remember that young man in China who stood in Tiananmen Square. Those of you that are older remember this. Back in, in, in the late 70s, I believe it was. And he stood up against a, a military tank and just held up his hands. I remember that. I think I was in college back then. I don't know. And it so impressed me that this young man would stand up against a mighty nation. But how many people have done this throughout the, throughout the ages? Joan of Arc, Martin Luther, who resisted a world empire. John Kennedy, who said, within 10 years, we're going to put a man on the moon. And it was 1969. I remember I was there with my brothers when they, when they actually landed on the moon for the first time. Within 10 years. Now we have a black president. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? But people believe. Somebody had to believe. Somebody had to believe that these things can happen. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. It was 1977. And that year, our baseball team lost all seven of their games, as they always did. Football team didn't do much better. Basketball team didn't do much better. But they had a new coach. His name was Steve Castro. <clears throat> he, was a, he had been from Robstown. He had left. He had come back. And he took 20 teenagers, right? 20 teenagers in a city that was filled with violence, a city filled with poverty, a city that people made fun of. And he told these 20 teenagers, if you can believe, you can change things. You can be winners. You don't have to be losers. Can you believe that? Are you able to believe in yourself? That if you really want to, if you really, really want to, you can make a difference in this city. 20 teenagers. Some of us that are older, we look at circumstances around us. We see the things, things like the way things are, and we say, you know, another year. And nothing's changing. Nothing's going to change. But young people are different. I don't know. I don't know what it is about young people. I remember when I first gave my life to the Lord, 1981. I was in college. And I was, I was sharing with my family about how Jesus will someday come back in the clouds. And with, with the angels of heaven. And I was so excited telling them. And, and my little nephews, who were small back then, they listened to this. They heard me say this. And 30 minutes later, I was still talking about how Jesus is coming back. He'll come back in the clouds. And then, and then it, it occurred to me, where are the little ones? Where are the little, the, my, my nieces and nephews who were six years old? The oldest one was eight years old. And I looked outside, and they were out there outside the house looking up into the sky waiting for him to come. Young people are amazing. I love it. Young people are amazing. But Jesus has called us to, to do the impossible. Jesus has called us to accomplish what people tell us cannot be done. That's why he stood in the wilderness 
with thousands of people who were hungry, who were poor, who were sick. And to these people, he said, blessed are you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall, in, they shall, be, they shall see God. Blessed are the, are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed, and he just kept blessing them and said, Blessed are you when people make fun of you and revile you, for great is your kingdom, your reward in heaven. And he's talking to people that are probably wondering, I'm blessed. What do you mean, I'm blessed? Look at me. Look at what I'm going through. Look at my poverty. Look at my sickness. But Jesus was, was speaking to their potential. He was speaking to their future. Jesus was calling them out to something greater. Wayne Gretzky, the great hockey player, was a risk taker. When he was asked why he was so successful on the ice, you know what he told him? He said, I skate to where the puck is going to be. That takes faith. That takes trust. That takes courage to be able to launch yourself into the unknown. Jesus would scare the disciples, I think. I think he would scare them. When there was this huge storm and they were out in the boat by themselves, you know, they were scared of the storm, right? They were scared of the storm. But the Bible says that when they saw Jesus, they weren't scared. They were terrified. Jesus terrified them. And they said, what kind of man is this? What kind of an individual is Jesus tonight? I ask you, what kind of a person is Jesus that he calls us to do the impossible? If you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Like I said, in 1977, I was just, wi I was just saying, I'm going to graduate and leave this town because I don't want to be a loser. I don't want to be in this situation of violence. I grew up in violence. My family was always, there was always violence in my family. 1977, something happened. A baseball team, a baseball team, 20 teenagers went out there to play baseball, to sing, swing the bat. But they had a coach that kept telling them, if you can believe, you can be champions. If you can believe, you can change things in your family in your life, in your community. If you can believe it, can you believe it? Are you willing to try? Are you willing to believe for the impossible? Are you willing to believe that your school can have trophy cases where you can be champions? People will no longer call you what they've been calling you. And they went out there. We didn't, I didn't believe it. 20 teenagers, 20 teenagers went out there to swing their bats. Robstown cotton pickers. The Robstown cotton pickers. Even the name sounds funny. I mean, you got the wildcats, you got the cougars, you got the bears, and, but the cotton pickers? The name is, is funny. Well, that year, they went 0-7. Did not win a single game. The second part of the year, or the, or the season, they went 7-0. and oh. They won all of their games. 
The newspaper called them the Cinderella team. The Robstown cotton pickers. Cinderella team. My brother in Houston called me. My brother in Dallas called me. He said, what's going on with Robstown? We're hearing it even up to here. They're calling it the Cinderella team. And I said, I don't know, but we're praying. <laughs> we're praying. <laughs> and I would go to class. And our teacher would say, pray, let's pray. <laughs> we would pray. That year, they went on to win the district. They went on to area competition, and they won. They went on to the regionals, and they won. What is it that causes people to become winners? Do you know that you and I are winners, no matter what people say? Do you know that you are a champion, that you are an overcomer, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You are a champion because you are a child of God. But first, you must believe. As I close my story, I want to I wanna invite you to imagine taking a short drive down Avenue J in Robstown. It's been 30, over 30 years since those 20 teenagers won. It's no longer 1977, it is 2012. And I wanna show you something that forever changed my life. For those of you that know Pastor Jose Rojas, he's my boss. I shared this story with him, and he just took it all over the world. I even got him a T-shirt. <laughs> I got him a T-shirt from, from the country. And he visited my town four times. He said, because I wanted to see firsthand what 20 teenagers can do to a, to a town. And when you get to First Street, you turn left. If you keep driving another six blocks, you'll see the church that I used to pastor for 10 years before coming to Maryland. But if you make an immediate right turn, you're in Avenue G. A few blocks down, there's a stadium. It's called Driscoll Stadium. And if you look inside of that stadium, you see high schoolers playing baseball. It's almost year-round. They play baseball almost year-round. And they're practicing. They're practicing baseball. If you continue another few blocks, you see another playing field. It's a little bit smaller. And you see little children with their mom and dad playing baseball. And if you look at dad's face, you might see scars of the hard life, the kind that I grew up in. But they're not fighting anymore. They're not into drugs anymore. They are teaching their children how to play baseball. Six and seven year old children, baseball uniform, uniforms, learning to catch the ball. These are the faces of champions. Folks who believe. But that's not what I want to show you. As you come to the end of the street, you take another right. And that's where my mom and dad used to live, on Bosque Street. And if you look ahead, there's another stadium, much bigger, much bigger with lights and modern seating, bigger stadium, wraps down cotton pickers. And if you just look beyond the stadium, there's an even bigger stadium up ahead, a modern, huge stadium. These are not poor people anymore. 
Something happened here. Something happened 30 plus years ago. But then you turn right again and you're back on Avenue J, the street where, I, where you first started. And there's a large display. 1977 district champions. 1978 district champions. 1979 area champions. 1980 regional champions. And you keep looking across this sign until you get to state quarterfinals, state semifinals, into the 90s, state champions. The next year, state champions again. And you, you begin to look at that sign. And you realize this is a legacy. A legacy. It is a story of champions who suddenly believe. 20 teenagers, remember? And if, as you pass the display, there's a school, the Robstown High School. It's big. It's a big school. And you're finally outside the place I wanted to show you. You drive into the parking lot and you see it. It's four words that forever changed my life. The words are written on the wall of the school auditorium where everyone can see. And you remember Steve Castro, and you remember those talks that he had with 20 teenagers of being champions, and two dozen teenagers trying to believe. And on the wall is written against a bright cotton picker, red background. And those words say, first, you must believe. As you begin a new year, I want to challenge you, especially those young people here. I want, to, I want to challenge you to remember this story, because this is a true story, where a few teenagers changed an entire city. What more can you do in this church? You can, you can change this entire community. You can change the world if you can believe. That's God's challenge. It is not in the skills that we possess, as important as they are, it is not in the programs that you put together for this coming year, as important as that is. It is not in the strategic planning, and I know about strategic planning, so I've done a lot of that, but it's not even in that. It's in the divine spark that only champions possess. It's when we can know and trust that God will not fail us, because when you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. May God bless you.